Hello, my friends. I'm here with Annabelle in my studio. We were just doing a quick uh, little uh, Israel celebration for CBN. And I just wanted to show you something. I thought, well, before I go, I can introduce you to what's on the set. This is my family in Israel, by the way. That's uh, my sister, Joyce. She uh, became an Israeli citizen, I guess, in the 1950s. And these are my nieces and nephews there. Look how smiling, how lovely they are. Such a great, great smiles and what teeth they've got. And that's Annabelle's there with me. And there I am there. And you know what's, uh, what's amazing is the resilience of Israeli people because they have to live with uh, potential sirens going off all the time and bombs. They all got bomb shelters. I never forget, I was looking at a potential apartment down there in Jerusalem. And they said, and here's the living room and here's the bathroom and the kitchen. And then here's the bomb room. I go, the what? Well, you know, you only got, when the sirens go off, you got uh, 30 seconds to go find your way into the bomb shelter. Can you imagine that having a bomb? And I'm thinking about how fragile we've become in the United States. People with the, this COVID virus is so fragile. I had a lady freaking out at me at Chick-fil-A because I was, I was no, it was uh, at Chipotle, or Chipotle. I can never pronounce it right. What is it, honey? Chipotle. Chipotle, Annabelle says. But uh, because I was standing too close, and I didn't know she had a mask on. And, you know, I run into people in public, and a lot of times they're like, hey, look who it is. And I couldn't see her expression, so I'm waving back at her, and she's like, saying, you idiot, get away from me. It wasn't a very edifying moment. But uh, I was just doing this broadcast, and I was pointing out that Passover, which was our Easter, which for you right now is reversed. But uh, this Passover right here, we experienced Passover. We didn't just celebrate it, we experienced because we were in our homes. In Israeli, the Jews, Netanyahu, had everybody staying in their houses. And it was an experience phenomenon. And now we're coming up on May 31st, and everybody's all excited about Pentecost and awakening and outpouring. Well, I believe that, that it can be experienced there too. I think there's an experience of Passover, and there's a potential experience of Pentecost. But, you know, I, I'm wondering, I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking at the state of things with... You don't mind me saying so, but I'm looking at the, the, the police state that is emerging, locking up people. I mean, it's so crazy in Dallas where I am. They took a lady who opens up her business, and the judge locks in. You know, he lets out a 1,000 criminals out of prison because of the virus and sticks a woman into the jail. Jails are letting out criminals, and they're putting in innocent people in because the judge was insulted that she didn't observe his authority. This is, this is what's coming in America if we're not careful. It's this sense of... Of, um, of, 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 of rulership. This is the police state. And then, trust me, the left is far more, it's more of an aphrodisiac to them than it is to Republicans and conservatives. So, uh, so we've got to really be watching this. And we have to be waking up, waking up. That's why I'm saying, I don't know if we should be praying for uh, the, the, this revival thing. Every Christian wants revival. I'm worried about this. I'm worried that we're all, oh, awakening talk, revival talk. It's like we're not aware of the fact that there's something far more insidious going on. It's called repentance. We are in a dangerous place because we had mercy with Donald Trump in 2016, and we're not acting like we got mercy. We're not, we're not dealing with this as though the name. I just honestly believe the Lord is allowing a shake-up to wake up. Does that make sense to you? I mean, these people have, uh, have no friends. They got Hamas on one side, Hezbollah on another, Iran on the north. But you know, I talked to them. I talked to the military leaders. I was down there. Fortunately, I got out of the country just before the quarantines kicked in. And I talked to military leaders. I said, what do you think about the, um, about the, uh, the president's decision regarding uh, the taking out the, uh, the Iranian general who was in charge of the, uh, all of the terrorism? They, their eyes lit up. They wouldn't bring it up to me, but since I brought it up, they said it was the most courageous move we've ever seen a president of the United States do in the history of Israel. Our own people wouldn't deal with Soleimani. Your president did. You know, think about this. Just within the last 12, within the last two years, the guy, the president moves the embassy to Jerusalem. He takes out the number one terror chieftain who literally was running the networks throughout the Middle East. He, he calls the bluff on Iran. And then this, this, uh, this bio weapon comes out of China. And the, uh, I'm telling you, there are politicians that want to bring America to its knees because when America is to its knees, they're so obsessed with Donald Trump, it removes him from office because his greatest argument for being president is the economy. They're saying, how we finally got, these people are so crazy. They're so obsessed with the driver. They, they're in the car. They would literally blindfold the driver and go over a cliff and celebrate it and even, not even thinking they're in the back seat. But this is the way people are when they're, when they're nuts, when they're, when they're out of their minds. So what do we have to do? Well, we've got Passover, we've got Pentecost. I say we should be praying from now till the 31st, May 31st. We have to do repentance. Repentance on behalf 
of the Americans, including the, the Christians that are just clueless. I mean, they simply didn't understand the danger of the moment we're in. But I think that it was only a remnant. It was a remnant that decided what happened in 2016. You know that as 180,000 voters. It was five swing states, 19,000 in Michigan, 20,000 in Wisconsin. It wasn't many. And it was a remnant. We're going to have to have the remnant show up. You know what I mean? I really believe that you are part of that remnant. And that's why I'm doing this quick broadcast. Because the, the, uh, the, the nation of Israel and the United States, two unique covenant people in history, where God himself has formed a, a relationship with a nation, and where the people that know their God can have power to prevail. And I say, let us prevail in prayer. Let us prevail in prayer all the way through to the 31st. Let us begin uh, fasting and let us begin praying that the Spirit, that we will repent on behalf of the, of the shallowness and self-preoccupation that we've had as Christians, not standing with uh, the president. I remember something that Justice Scalia said while he was still alive. He said that abortion could end and the pro-life movement could win and, and life could win if there was enough of a public outrage over abortion. But because there isn't, it's kind of like a tug of war and it becomes a matter of, you know, PR campaigns and election cycles. Did you hear what he said? If there was enough public outrage, I think there's a sense of, of apathy. It's almost like we're so, uh, we're in danger of becoming so submissive and compliant that we allow our own rights to be, to be lost, our own constitutional rights, our own rights to assembly, our own rights to freedom of speech. You watch. This is like a dress rehearsal. Remember, it was the environmentalists. Envi they, they, would, they would have loved to have created this kind of police state over the environment and shutting people down who didn't observe the environment. They, they couldn't prove anything with the environment, but now they have a whole new thing, which is going to be the next virus and the viruses and every war virus. And, and you can see how quickly people are willing to surrender their rights and their freedoms. I think we need to wake up. We need to wake up. Don't give to the secular, unsaved community the authority and the prerogative to define your freedom because they'll take it from you. That's the case. Israel knows this. Israel knows that, that their compliance and their support to hostile nations has only ended in their persecution and annihilation. They learned that in Germany the hard way. And they, they formed that nation so that it would never happen again. The United States is the refuge for Christians. We have to learn that lesson that we are the refuge. There's no place else. After the United States, where do you go? Where do you go for religious liberty? Where are you going to go for religious freedom and freedom of speech? And now our economy is in tatters. All the gains that we had in the Trump administration are lost. You don't think that God is saying something? I think he's saying he wants us to repent. I think we can recover. I do think we can recover. But I don't think we can recover being apathetic, indifferent, or politically agnostic. I think we better get organized, we better get mobilized, we better get motivated. Does that make sense? All right, share this with your friends. It's a little exhortation. I think God is visiting us. May 31st, don't be discouraged, be encouraged. I have to be a little apocalyptic or I wouldn't be true to my... Jewish DNA. I love you guys. Be talking to you soon. God bless. Thanks for joining me on this broadcast. And you know, we can stay connected together. If you subscribe, you're going to be updated on the next broadcast that comes out. And you could like this right here, and we could actually start to create a movement of connected people.